uh, although I have been elected, I am very happy to say, tidings of great joy, that um, Philippines was number one in the first round. Yes, that is due to the to the amazing efforts of our ambassador there, Ambassador Libran Kabaktulan. You know, to be a diplomat in the UN takes the highest level of skill and uh, and um, social intelligence. It's it's really not a question of who is the best or the brightest. It's more a question of how you interact with other countries so that you can have what is commonly known as mutual exchange of favors or quid pro quo. If we were courting the votes of certain countries, you also have to be ready with our own proposal for a vote in favor of their own candidate for one or other of these many, many international organizations. So sometimes I felt like a blushing bride with two warriors exchanging wampum or shells. <laughs> but in any event, uh, we are very happy that we are number one because it elevates the, the image of the Philippines in the international public opinion. After all, only the very few, only a very limited list of members of the elite in the legal professions all over the world are dominated to the International Court of Justice. But um, I also want to thank not only President Aquino who nominated me, Foreign Affairs Secretary Albert Del Rosario, who was very masterful as he exercised his powers of generalship over Philippine embassies abroad all over the world, um, under Secretary Rafael Segis, who was the campaign manager, and finally, and most of all, Ambassador Libran Cabactulan, who bore the brunt, who was the beast of burden while we were campaigning. But I also want to thank my political enemies. I believe that they were fervently praying that I would be elected so that they could get me out of the country. <laughs> Sorry to spoil your fun, boys, but I'm not leaving right away. Uh, we are taking our oath of office in March, and I'm not necessarily going to be called right after March. There is